Um, so here's a little diagram quick of, of our national structure. Um, you can see on the left here, we have delegates from uh, state parties, and there's a plus sign, right? <laughs> and then there's delegates from identity caucuses. So our federation is made up of two members. There's the state parties we were talked about, but we also recognize a couple of caucuses. Um, the idea of the caucuses is to, to uh, make sure that uh, you know, historically underrepresented voices are actually represented and heard more in our party. Um, so uh, right now there's a few uh, accredited caucuses. There's a Black Caucus, a Women's Caucus, a Latinx Caucus, uh, the Lavender Greens, which is our LGBTQIA plus caucus, and then the, uh, the Youth Caucus, which uh, named itself the Young Eco-Socialist. Um, so we have these caucuses that members can join in addition to joining their state party. Um, so you can look into those if you would like, um, but probably your your starting point with joining the Green Party is gonna be joining your local Green Party or your state Green Party. Um, if you have a local party near you, that's probably the best place to start because then you can get started at the, at the ground level and, and uh, learn more about how the party works. Uh, if there's not a local near you, then you can reach out to your state party and learn more about um, how to get involved with the state and how to maybe even start a local party near you. You know, they can they can give you resources and information about like, um, you know, what greens might uh, live near you that you can contact and, you know, information on how to start a local party and, um, you know, what all that entails. So uh, you want to get involved with your local state party. Um, and then we have these identity caucuses and both of them elect delegates that go to our green national committee. And so the Green National Committee is kind of like our Congress. It's, it's where all of the representatives from our, our states and caucuses get together and they, uh, they discuss and they vote on our national party policy. So that could be anything from uh, updating our national party platform. So if you want to see changes to the platform, if you think that it, it doesn't cover something that it should, um, you can talk to the delegates from your state party to the national committee and ask them to support a platform change, for example. Um, you know, they vote on um, uh, endorsing events. So if there's like a march or a big, you know, national rally or something like that, we can endorse it and try to put support behind it. Um, you know, obviously supporting candidates when we can. Um, and then we, uh, the National Committee elects a steering committee, which Chris was on the steering committee. I currently am. And the steering committee does this kind of administrative work to kind of make sure that the National Party is handling um, all of its business democratically, right? When someone puts in a proposal, for example, to change the platform, it has to go through a whole discussion process and voting process and all in the steering committee makes sure that all those phases and stages happen. Um, and this is all volunteer run. It's all it's all run by the members. You know, again, we don't have, um, you know, big corporate donors and they don't swoop in and say, I want this in the platform, whatever. It all comes from our membership that comes from the grassroots up. And so, um, you know, locals and state parties can have their own platforms of candidates and things, but they can also contribute to this national um, party, which uh, does a number of things. So the, the National Committee is our Congress where uh, folks get together and make kind of the high level decisions. The steering committee handles kind of more administrative day to day sort of decisions. They're the cabinet. Yeah, the cabinet. <laughs> And then, uh, and then a lot of the actual work of the National Green Party actually gets distributed to uh, the standing committees. There's like 22, I think. Um, and the standing committees handle uh, particular tasks that are important to the National Party. So for example, there's a media committee that puts out uh, press releases and does social media. There's a platform committee that reviews uh, platform amendments and, and goes through that process. Um, you know, we have a... a a campaign committee that you know can help candidates get started with their campaigns. Uh, there's a ballot access committee that can help um, states uh, um, kind of coordinate their ballot access efforts to uh, to figure out what they need to do, um, and, it, and it even has some funding to give some some grants to the state parties, although not as much as I'd like to see. So you know we have to uh, up our uh, our fundraising and, and membership and things, um, but you know it, all of uh, all of these resources are available. Uh, for state parties and for members. Um, and, you know, what we have now can hopefully grow into much more as, as more people join into the party. Um, but that's the, the rough structure of the National Party here. We have that National Committee, uh, that's the Congress. We've got the Steering Committee, that's kind of a cabinet. And then members get uh, appointed to these standing committees to do tasks like ballot access or media or, or whatever. Um, they get appointed to those committees from the states and, and caucuses again 
So if you wanted to be involved in, say, national media, you could ask your state party to appoint you to the media committee, and then you can work with uh, members from other states on national media stuff. Um, and then finally, the National Committee approves delegates to go uh, talk with other Green Parties, because as we mentioned earlier, there are other Green Parties in the world. There are over 100 Green Parties, actually, around the world. Um, and they they actually kind of fit a spectrum of Green politics, and so we don't necessarily agree with all of them. <laughs> um, some of them can be a bit more, um, you know, liberal and, and um, uh, you know, even, you know, somewhat weird about uh their take on green politics, but we tr uh, we do work with uh, the green parties that are uh, leftists, the eco-socialist green parties like ourselves. Um, so we're trying to build better ties with them so that we can have a, a larger international movement for green politics. And so I, it's probably hard to see, but I put like a little picture up there, for example, that um, one of our local members in Pittsburgh actually went to Japan and met with the J uh, Japan Green Party, some members from the Japan Green Party, and they actually did a tour around Fukushima and talked about issues around nuclear power and how we had to eventually move away from nuclear power uh, because of all the problems there and, and um, you know, the mishandling of it by the Japanese government and things like that. The Japanese Greens spoke out against that when, you know, most others didn't. So, you know, there's opportunities for us to, to collaborate uh, internationally with other Green parties that share our values. Yeah, when I went on my honeymoon in 2018, um, you know, I, I met with Greens um, while I was overseas. Um, you know, I, I got to, to speak with Greens who are in leadership roles and whose cities are green, right? Green ran, um, things like that. And it, it was definitely a, a very fulfilling and eye opening experience. To, uh, <laughs> you know, I, when I was in Amsterdam, I met with a green city councilor, um, and their green party Grun left, um, which is green left, right? They're, they are a radical socialist party and they, they market themselves as such and they're the largest party on their city council. Um, but when, when we went, they hold their annual meetings in the same concert venue that I saw Nine Inch Nails play in. Right? <laughs> so they have thousands of people throughout the city coming out uh, to democratically participate in the green party um, in, in the city. Um, you know, filling massive, um, you know, large concert venues to do so. Yeah. And the, you know, the Green Party is a multi tent of a multi party system. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, you know, there's a, um, like I said, there's like over 100 Green Parties around the world in, in uh, many different countries, but especially the ones the in, I met in, Den in Denmark when I met people in Denmark. The the Green Party in Denmark is part of the farthest left coalition in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, they're in coalition with uh, the Revolutionary Communist Party, and um, it, it's called the Red Green Alliance. Mm -hmm. So, the That's Nordic right. states um, are, are a solid eco socialist, um, mm -hmm. you know, base in Europe that's kind of pushing back against the liberal green base in Germany and uh, England. Mm -hmm. You know, so you've you've got um, the the greens in the Netherlands, the greens in um, Denmark, the greens in Iceland, where they have a green prime minister. Right? We never talk about that. People mm. in the U.S. on the left love to praise Iceland's prime minister. She's a green, right? Uh, we just don't. We, it doesn't get brought up here because that we don't want to admit that multi-party systems, you know, have a positive impact. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, there's a there's a lot of green parties, and and we try to work with especially the the leftist eco socialist ones, and they exist all over. Like Chris was saying, um, and uh, you know, a lot of those green parties have, especially in the last few years, really grown a lot, um, both on their own, just because more people are seeking out green politics, but also because they're increasingly working in these red green alliances with other socialist parties to really grow. Uh, because I think especially the youth around the world understand the problems of climate change and that climate change can't really totally be addressed without addressing capitalism. We're seeing that movement grow globally. So I, you know, the green, the greens are in that. So uh, it's a little bit easier in, in places in Europe where they have these multi-party systems because they have ranked choice voting and they have much more fair ballot access laws. We were talking about tens of thousands of signatures to get on the ballot in a lot of states in the U S 
And in Europe, it's like 20 or something, you know? <laughs> and in the UK to run for parliament. Right, right exactly. So it's, it's like, it's such a huge difference. Um, so that's one reason that they can grow better in, in Europe. And we face a much more significant challenge in the U.S., but again, you know, organizing, we can overcome it because we, we see how people want our policy, want our platform and want our politics. We know from polling in the U.S. and we know from the success of the Green Party and the rest of the world. So, you know, we just have to keep building for it.